I think we can all agree that in the world of computer graphics, one of the things that define a character is hair. You know, the kind of hair that made Disney characters like Merida from Brave and Rapunzel so iconic. Now, if you are a 3D artist like me, at some point, you'll be wondering what's the best software for creating things like hair. You have probably heard of how crazy realistic Houdini simulations can be, or how free and easy to learn Blender is. But what about Maya? I mean, sure, Maya got a reputation for creating characters and doing character animation, as well as building immersive environments, especially for video games and movies. But can it be good when it comes to creating realistic hair? If so, what are the tools that are gonna help you do that? Now, let me take a moment and tell you about Salad, a computer sharing community that can help you earn back some of the money you spent on your crazy high-end setup. If you have a beefy GPU, you can earn up to $180 a month in rewards by doing virtually nothing. Salad puts your PC to work, helping the world with massive computing projects like AI and machine learning. So when you are not editing, rendering, or creating art, you can start up the Salad app and start earning some rewards. It is completely safe. You can check their Trustpilot page, their open view code, or all the five-star reviews. Your computer's hard work is gonna be rewarded with games, gift cards, gaming hardware, and much more. So if you have a powerful rig, click the link in the description and get started today. Now back to the video. Now let's talk about the backstory of Maya's hair system, which is tied closely to the software overall development. And you know what? It's been a big deal in how we go about creating hair in the CG world in general. So back in the late 90s, when Maya was just stepping into the scene, hair was mainly represented using basic textures and polygonal geometry, kind of what people are still doing nowadays for video game characters. However, with the need for a more realistic and dynamic hair simulations, Maya got some serious improvements, and the introduction of paint effects in Maya 4.5 in 2002 took things up a notch, enabling artists to create complex hair strands using brushes and strokes. And with Maya 7, the software introduced the Maya hair system. This one offered more tools for modeling, simulating, and adding the possibility to render hair using Manta Ray, which is a great render engine, enabling artists to achieve high quality results. Later versions of Maya continued to expand hair creation capabilities, and the 2008 version saw the integration of NHair module, offering improved simulation and dynamics for more accurate hair movements. And in Maya 2011, Viewport 2.0 was introduced, providing real-time visual feedback for hair grooming and styling. Wait, we are not done yet. Autodesk didn't stop there and continued enhancing the hair creation repertoire in Maya, this time with a completely new hair and fur system called X-Gen, which allowed artists to unleash their full potential and made the workflow way more intuitive. And besides the in-house development, many plugins have been created for such a task. CG hair has come a long way since the 90s and early 2000s, and I still remember four of characters like Sully from Monsters Inc., which looked impressive at the time. Since then, studios have worked really hard on their fancy tools to make hair look and behave realistically. And I would say they have nailed that and the results talk about themselves. Just check out the fur in the Planet of the Apes movies in addition to Kong, which not only looks realistic, but it interacts perfectly with water and snow in addition to other things. And for me, this is the embodiment of realistic hair and fur. Now, let's not forget about artificial intelligence is jumping into the game by taking a look at what NVIDIA is doing with their mind-blowing real-time hair simulations, which just looks impressive. But let's keep it real. All this fancy tech and those proprietary tools are not within the reach of the average Joe. So we're gonna stick to Maya and what it has to offer. Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys, especially Maya users, if you need Maya plugins and scripts for modeling, retopology, rigging, animation, rendering, you name it, 
you will find a list of the best stuff in the description of this video. For example, for topology, you can use a plugin like Zrail that allows you to create polygons on sculpted surfaces in a beautiful way. And if you want to do some hard surface modeling, you can take a look at plugins like Mod It, Plug It, and Stamp It, which will allow you to create complex hard surface models like robots, weapons, or anything else of this kind. For animation, I highly recommend the Pavel Barnav animation scripts because they are just amazing and they are used by many VFX and game development studios. For simulation and effects, you can use some of the best tools like FumeFX for fire, smoke, and explosions, Pull Down It for destruction effects, and Ornatrix for hair and fur. So I highly recommend you check out these tools because it will save you a ton of time and headaches, but it will also support this channel. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now back to XGen. The tool was originally developed and published back in SeaGraph 2003 by Disney. And after tweaking it and playing around with it in some shorts and movies over the years, it was decided to share it with the public in 2011. But later, Autodesk liked it so much that they snagged it to have an exclusive license for it. And by 2015, XGen was fully integrated into Maya and it was shipped out as a general purpose instancing tool that can scatter and handle tons of instance trees, plants, and all sorts of props super efficiently. But it was mainly focused on creating complex hair and fur just like Disney intended it to be. And before talking about some of its features and advantages, let's take a look at Nhair, the second tool in Maya for creating hair. Unlike XGen, Nhair is more about simulating the natural flow of hair. It's part of the nucleus toolset, like ant cloth and ant particles. While it might not have all the flashy UI and groomy tools that XGen has, artists can still get pretty decent results using it. And as we mentioned earlier, the cool thing about it is its powerful dynamic system. Combine that with the hair you made in XGen, and you will get these awesome natural movements in your hair and fur, not to mention the way it interacts and collides with characters and their surroundings. Now that we have seen some Maya's capabilities, how does it compare to other software in the field? And the first one that comes to mind is obviously Houdini. I mean, it is one of, if not the best package for simulations out there. And that's for a reason. Houdini allows for a fully procedural workflow, giving artists insane control over their projects. And let's not forget the accurate simulation solvers that it has which allow for a two-way interaction between hair and its surroundings, something other software just can't do. Take the Vellum Solver for example. It lets you simulate wet or snowy hair. And guess what? Houdini 20 just rolled out with some sweet new weather features, making it the go-to software for this task, and studios are already using it for their visual effects. Blender, on the other hand, is still a good option. And with the hair tools that were released in version 3.5, let me tell you for the hair quality and control you have, and because it is a free software, I will choose Blender in any day. While I don't believe it doesn't have to make it simulate hair very realistically, I don't think it's gonna take a while for it to happen, thanks to its highly active community and development team. So as we have seen, Maya has a good arsenal of tools when it comes to creating hair and fur. And from what I can see, these are one of the best tools in the industry that have been keeping Maya alive and kicking for quite some time now. And I bet it will keep doing so for many years to come. But who knows, things might change in the future. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.